que pueden hablar con Catherine, Catherine. Ella es la que puede traducir para ustedes. Si hay necesidad. Si alguien quiere que se ayude, tomar una silla. Vamos a ver. Sí. Hola a todos, mi nombre es Corey Edwards, soy el Deputy Historic Preservation Officer de la Oficina de Historic Preservation. Y nos agradecemos por tomar el tiempo esta mañana para darnos un feedback muy importante antes de comenzar este proceso. Voy a introducir rápidamente a OHP staff. Tenemos a Jan Miller, el director de Historic Preservation Officer, Kathy Rodriguez, Deputy Historic Preservation Officer, Claudia Garrett, Cultural Historian, Stephanie Phillips, Senior Historic Preservation Specialist, Wade Pham, Historic Preservation Specialist, and Jimena. And with us is Linda Jimenez, who's going to be our facilitator tonight. Um, so I'm going to give it back to her. She's going to kind of go over the agenda for us, and then um, we'll present some information. Good evening, everyone. It's good to see everybody here. Thank you for coming. Uh, this is, uh, for me, this is very exciting. I like the idea of protecting these sheds myself. So anyway, uh, the, uh, what we had for this evening. Uh, was to what we had, so it's on your agenda also, so you can see it. The uh, intentions for this uh, meeting tonight are to get you all informed of the, of the city of San Antonio's intentions <coughs> and protection for view sheds around the city, and to give you an opportunity to express your opinions about those uh, proposed view shed protection actions that are being considered by the city of San Antonio, as well as uh, give you an opportunity to indicate your preferences for um, which, uh, which particular view sheds uh, exhibited at this meeting need to, need to have some kind of protection. And what we hope from come out of this also is that you'll understand and support the city's desire to protect these view sheds that have uh, historic and cultural importance. So we'll start with a presentation by, uh, Corey's gonna do a presentation to talk about what the city's planning, give you some ideas about what we're talking about with a view shed. And then uh, I'm going to do a series of questions to ask you to think about, to kind of reflect on what he said, and how, um, what the city's thinking about, to get some feedback from you all and some input from you all about, about that. And then we're going to ask you, we'll give you uh, post-it notes that look, where did they go? Awesome. Anyway, there's some little post-it notes there, some that are in the shape of a heart, some that look like a little caption thing, and uh, ask you to put those put the your notes and uh, indicate on these different photographs which are the view sheds that you really like. And I'll go over that again in, in, in just a few minutes. And then after that, we'll come back, we'll kind of take a look at which ones have the most indicators on them just to see which one the favorites are, and then talk about next steps, and then we'll close probably before 8 o'clock, but at least by 8 o'clock. Okay. And, um... Yes, Restrooms are just oh, restrooms. <laughs> restrooms around this way. Okay. <laughs> that way. Yeah. Uh, okay, so let me turn it back over to Corey and he's going to do it about Christmas. Thank you. I also forgot to give a huge thank you to the, uh, to the AIA. Um, Tori Carlton is in the back somewhere, and so thank you for, for help today setting up um, and offering the space to us. Um, and it's not just tonight, they're going to let the space uh, be available during their normal office hours throughout the week, a uh, couple weeks. Um, and so if you didn't make it to the meeting tonight, we'll make an announcement um, through social media and our website. People can still come and leave comments on the images that you see tonight. Um, so it's a lot of information. I'm going to try not to go too fast. I tend to talk too fast, but there's a lot of information. Um, and hopefully uh, we'll be able to answer any questions that you have at the end of the presentation. So first, what is a new shed? When we use the word view shed, we're, it's a very broad term, and so there's sometimes confusion about what we're actually talking about. Um, by definition, it literally means what you can see in a given spot. Um, so in this photo, the view shed is literally what you see in the photo. Um, so something behind a tree, something behind the hill that you can't see is not in the view shed. If you can see it in the photo, it's in the view shed. Um, it's also referred to line of sight sometimes. Um, and generally, you know, if you take a photo of something, um, that's going to be your view shed. Um, in terms of um, when we discuss a view shed, we're actually talking about a development tool um, that operates as a zoning overlay. Um, so we're actually referring to a view shed protection district. 
So a zoning overlay um, that's a district that's uh, specific to safeguarding views, um, and that's done by providing standards for building height um, and placement of buildings that are not addressed by regular zoning regulations. Um, it's a type of tool that San Antonio has used since 2003. Um, you might know the view check for the Alamo. Um, you can see that blue triangle there. Um, so this is a zoning overlay map. And so you can see that these zoning overlays kind of live on a two-dimensional map. What's unique about view sheds is they actually, while applied on a two-dimensional GIS map, they're three-dimensional. Um, so there's angles and different directions um, associated with those view sheds, which make it a pretty unique and sometimes difficult to explain tool. Um, so the purposes of having new sheds, you know, uh, this is actually a language that's in the existing ordinance um, in the development code of new sheds. Um, the goals are to safeguard views that reflect the city's natural, cultural, and historic fabric, um, to enhance the city's image um, so that, you know, we're sort of showcasing San Antonio through its uh, iconic views, um, and create favorable impressions, uh, visual interest, and photographic quality for both visitors and our residents. It contributes to the quality of life. Um, and so this kind of sums it up. I mean, things from San Antonio. So San Antonio is made up by these iconic views. Um, and uh, no coincidence, a lot of these things you see in the postcard are images that were submitted as part of this public process. Um, the, the views of the city along with its culture and built environment contribute to the authenticity, sense of place, and the uh, desirable urban environment. Um, so we're gonna have a few more slides that kind of uh, better illustrate this issue. Um, this is not San Antonio, this is New York. Who has been to Grand Central Station? Thank you, people. Um, so when it was built, um, it was kind of a, it was built along a, a corridor. Um, Park Avenue terminates in front of the Grand Central Station. The trains go down below, and there's a big, broad um, avenue. You can see the green grass in front of the, the central building. Um, and so there's this visual relationship along the corridor and between the two buildings you see in the postcard. In the 60s, they built the Pan Am building, which is right in between those two buildings and kind of at the terminus of that corridor. Um, so this did a few things that you can see in the pictures. Um, one, it uh, changed the way that you view Grand Central Station from the front, um, looking north. Um, two, it disrupted the visual historical link between those two buildings as they were intended to have. Um, and three, because it is off the grid and is on a corridor, it's actually more visible than it would be if it was built in a normal city block. Um, and so in the 80s, there was a call when this was voted um, the number one building that New Yorkers, New Yorkers would like to see demolished. So it's not very popular. <laughs> um, this is a project that is um, in Los Angeles. This is the Eastern Columbia building. Um, our <coughs> clock tower you see is very iconic, and you know a lot of people downtown really know this building and even use the clock when they're on the sidewalk. Um, and so because of the the massing building that you see based on its height and proximity, it's going to block the view of that tower from the sidewalk. So that raises a lot of concerns about the need for viewsheds in Los Angeles. Um, sometimes there's issues with new construction <coughs> diminishing historic views, but also natural views as well. It's not always a historic context. And so we, we did invite um, submissions of photos all over San Antonio, including natural borders as well. Um, so the reason we're here is there was a council consideration request, or CCR, um, initiated by District 7 and District 2 council offices um, that directs staff to look at this. Um, we've been asked to look at the UC, the development code, um, look at the existing uh, provisions for view shed and recommend additional sites that would warrant view shed protection. Um, like as mentioned, the original ordinance was from 2013, uh, sorry, 2003, um, so it is pretty old. Um, and uh, there's there's places that we have to well, find the presentation where it is lacking and the, the types of things that we might think would be beneficial in San Antonio. Um, there's common misconceptions when we talk about view shed protection districts. Um, the first is it does not establish a no-build zone um, for private property or require that a property maintain, be maintained as green space. Um, the idea is that it still allows for development, but it's going to provide new standards and regulations for that development that aren't there currently. Um, it does not control the use or change the uh, uses allowed by the underlying zoning. Um, and while we are going to move very quickly in this process, it's not something that can happen overnight. Um, in the end, we're talking about new zoning overlays. Um, and so, um, there's a two-step process. The first step is that we are going to uh, pursue new sites that allow um, the inclusion of additional sites. Um, we're looking at designation criteria and or potential methods for achieving new shed protection. Um, once those amendments are in place, then we can move forward with zoning cases and zoning overlays that would actually apply to the property. And that's the thing that actually allows the city to enforce these new sheds. 
So step two is a big step, um, and it's not going to happen until we go through this public input process. Um, so the current provisions in the development code. Um, to be designated a view shed protection district, or a shed protection overlay district, which I'll explain, um, the area must lie within a view shed of a major entrance or front door to the following historic landmark buildings, and objects, sites, or structures. And then there's an actual list of buildings in the development code. So if you look at the pictures, how many of these are buildings? A lot of them, but there's also things that aren't buildings. There's structures, there's bridges, there's scenic corridors, there's, there's vegetation, there's uh, Japanese tea garden. Um, so the code that's, the provisions we have in the code now are insufficient to allow protections of these types of sites that the, the community thinks are important. Um, so when we're looking at these potential UDC amendments, we're looking at doing a few things. Uh, the first thing is kind of expanding those established designation criteria so that it considers more than just this front door view or more than just the buildings that are listed in the UDC. Um, we are actually reconsidering the use of that list and instead maybe we'll develop actual um, designation criteria so that we can evaluate a uh, future proposal for fusion protection. One of the issues is um, this list was created in 2003 and now we're doing it again through the public input <coughs> process. But what if we can see that would allow us to consider future sites um, without having to revise the list every time? So we're trying to think more broadly about the process. Um, and also consideration of new, uh, new methods and manage points. Um, so the only provisions for view sheds now are that kind of front door, forward facing view for the Alamo that, um, that you're more familiar with. Um, but as you see, there's a number of methods and tools of fusion protections that could be put in place. Um, so we want to make sure that the, the code allows for the use of those different types of tools. Um, so when we're thinking about new view sheds, we're thinking, thinking about a few things. Um, one is the thing itself, does it, the thing itself rise to the level um, that, that would warrant individual view shed protection? Um, is there a community consensus that this is an important iconic feature of San Antonio that, that deserves that level of protection? Um, because it's not it's not a small thing. We are, you know, rezoning properties and placing requirements that aren't there now. So we do need to make sure that uh, there is a consensus and community agreement moving forward on those sites. Um, we want to then identify what are the actual iconic views in addition to the actual thing. So it's not enough just to develop the list of things. It's the methods of how we <coughs> protect those things. Does that make sense? Um, so kind of to reiterate that that point. Uh, so the focus is not limited to only the eligible sites, but also the desired views. And that's part of the reason that we chose to do the uh, photo submission method uh, for this process, is you're actually going out and you're kind of looking at these things as you would see them. Um, and so, you know, we see the Tower Life building several times, but we're seeing different vantage points and different angles. Um, so that's going to inform the process much better than just saying the Tower Life building needs a view show. Um, crafting new tools to achieve the desired outcomes. Um, and then you'll see in some of the examples uh, that we're going to go through, um, balancing the effectiveness of the tool with its ease of use. Um, at some point, you know, these could be very complicated, but they could be very straightforward. Um, and there is kind of a balancing area of um, finding, uh, you know, tools that are the most effective. Um, we are working with a UCHA technical advisory committee through this process. Um, it's mostly made up of architects and design professionals, uh, representatives from the AIA. Um, they are there to provide technical expertise throughout this process. Um, they are going to help us uh, craft the UDC amendments uh, and, and potential evaluation criteria. Um, we are going to work with them to identify new or unique approaches to addressing new sheds. Um, and then they've also been helping us craft this public input process. And so um, uh, the woman who invented hashtag this place matter or this few matter is just walking the door. <laughs> so Member Jen is one of our um, technical advisory committee members. I mean, I should actually mention, if you serve on the Busha Technical Advisory Committee, can you raise your hand? We have several of you here. So we have Kirby Hightower, Monica Chimino, and Andres Tavar, and Suman. Um, so thank you all for coming tonight as well. Um, so, so through that process, um, we are looking, like I said, to establish new evaluation criteria. Um, and so I'm going to go through these. Kind of briefly, um, but we can talk about it more um, during the, the question and comments period. Um, so these are kind of four different categories. Uh, we we want to make sure that they are important to the public and represent a shared experience. Um, the term uh, shared memory, collective memory, comes up a lot when you talk about these sorts of things. So it's a view that's significant to the public memory or demonstrates a shared community experience. 
or the view has gone unchanged over a long period of time and has become iconic and is part of the San Antonio brand. Um, the second one is respects objects or landscape, landscapes of historical or cultural significance. Um, so an example would be a view that is important of a, of a important historic landmark, plaza, public art installation, a monument, or it's a view of an important cultural landscape um, that's characterized by natural or scenic qualities. So that would be your Japanese tea garden or your <coughs> natural corridors. Um, communicates cultural or social values. Um, so the view tells a story of the cultural or history of San Antonio through spatial relationships. Because um, sometimes these things are hard to find. Sometimes it's just the, the scale and placement of the buildings that kind of define that, that sense of place. Um, or the view characterizes the rich and diverse heritage of San Antonio. So that might be public art or some other unique installation to a neighborhood. Um, benefits urban design or planning. Um, so the view enhances the quality of the urban environment and contributes to a sense of place. Or the view uh, provides an important visual link and improves wayfinding. But sometimes this is an important wayfinding tool. Um, historically, in, in cities like Rome and Paris, they've used uh, these visible objects as wayfinding tools down busy borders. So that might make sense in some places as well. Um, so in looking at case studies and examples from other cities, um, we've kind of put things into categories to show what the options are. Um, and we're going to go through them one by one so you can sort of understand uh, what tools other places you're using and hopefully get you thinking about what kind of tools might be effective here in San Antonio. Um, so this is a view cone. Uh, this is actually a, a diagram of what's in place now for the Alamo. Um, so as you can see, it's sort of a single point photographic view towards the Alamo. Um, if, if I was the green dot, that's where I'd be standing, I'd be looking at the Alamo. And the, the shade, or the massing that you see in orange is what I would be able to see if I was standing at that green spot. Um, so that ordinance would limit um, any uh, new construction within uh, the confines of that, that purple area. Um, and so they're effective for preserving the, photograph the photographic quality of a specific view. Um, now you can imagine if just on the other side of the green dot, a 50-story building is built. Would that have an impact at Alamo Plaza? Probably. Um, but it's not really defined in the current provisions for view shed protection. View corridors is another tool that's probably used most commonly. Um, this is a diagram of Austin, Texas. The state capitol has 30 corridors. Uh, not all of them are, are local, some are state and federal corridors as well. Um, this diagram illustrates a little bit better. It's very really complicated, um, and so there's, there's definitely things to learn from this method, but you can also see it's effective. Um, let me point that out. So you can see that uh, new skyscrapers have kind of arranged their massing here. This one has gone up to the side of the corridor, and they put the garage kind of here where it would be tucked underneath the corridor. So each one of these has its own uh, formula for how it can be calculated and uh, you, you can form to the, to the corridor restriction. Um, so it's notoriously complicated, but it's also you know successful um, because the idea is that um, as you move throughout the city, you'll catch these glimpses of, glimpses of the state capital. So that's one way of achieving it. This is an example of um, the Greenland Cemetery in Brooklyn. Um, there's a statue of Minerva that's placed on what's called the Altar of Liberty. And can you see what she's waving at? Statue of Liberty. Um, so this is sort of a historical link. Um, and it's interesting for, for people that visit the cemetery. But you can see if this building was just one or two stories taller, then that, that visual form would be obstructed. Um, so that kind of demonstrates the, the illustration, the, the purpose there. Um, another example is in St. Louis. And so there's this green urban lawn that was part of um, how the, the city was planned. Um, but they forgot one thing. So <laughs> this was built and sort of stretched the view um, looking towards the river versus the other way. Um, so again, you can see where uh, corridor overlays would be effective in those places. Um, uniform height restrictions are also very effective tools. So this is Madison, Wisconsin. Um, so instead of individual corridors where you get little glimpses of the, the capital, you see it everywhere because all the, all the buildings are much lower uh, than the capital dome. Um, so obviously it's more effective, but it's also very heavy-handed in terms of regulation. Um, most people are familiar with Washington, D.C. and those high restrictions. And so those are both uh, ways to make sure that the historic landmarks are rising above the new construction. Um, and they can also be used the other way. So this is in Paris, and this is where the new construction is rising above everything that's historic. Um, so up until 1977, they hadn't really thought about having these kinds of high regulations. That was just something that was done at the time. Um, so you can sort of certainly see uh, the effectiveness of, of high restrictions 
areas like this. Um, so the fourth type is kind of a hybrid of all of these. It's often referred to as a zone of respect, um, or kind of a buffer area. Um, so one of the first ones uh, that, that came onto the map was in the 80s. This is the um, City Hall in Philadelphia. Um, and I believe one building I built that was just too high for comfort, and so they placed high restrictions on all the buildings immediately around the City Hall. Um, so that's one way to do it. Um, this is what we've used locally with our Mission Protection Overlay Districts. Um, so you can see there's an established formula for calculating allowable height based on proximity. And so that height based on proximity is, is a different, uh, more unique method for individual landmarks. Um, and so these are just examples of some of the tools used, and they've all been in, implemented in various different ways depending on whatever the intended goal was at the place where it was put in place. Um, and so kind of with your input, we hope to develop whatever the most appropriate tool is depending on what we as a community decide is the goal. Um, so it raises the question, what are our goals here? Um, what are the views that are most important in San Antonio and just as importantly, who decides? Um, so this is kind of a recap. Uh, we did a social media campaign, hashtag, hashtag this view matters. Um, not a ton of submissions, but it is helpful uh, to see them all in one place, and it's, it's fun to see people's input. Um, we've received several by email, um, and then several of you have also brought in photos that are on the back table that we'll talk about. Um, through this exercise, we kind of um, hope to gain consensus about what are the priority views, because um, ultimately this will help us establish our goal and how we um, form city council uh, what the public input was through this process. Um, so, we're doing the physical gallery tonight, we're accepting written comments uh, tonight, but then also um, on our website. Um, at the end of the meeting, I'll pull up our website and show where to go for more information. Um, there is going to be an online survey that we're working on uh, that will use some of the photos that you see tonight. Um, and then, as this moves forward, it will go to all the appropriate boards and commissions, and so there will be more opportunities for public input. Um, project on the page. So next steps, um, we're going to keep doing this for the next couple months. Um, we anticipate presenting some recommendations and uh, for not only the UC amendments, but what are some prioritized uh, areas that you, you should get some public input uh, to the City Council Committee this spring. Um, and then after that, we will begin to draft the UDC amendments and we'll follow the public adoption process for those. And then step two is the one that I mentioned earlier, <coughs> the of the so part of what we would be seeking city council approval for as part of step one is approval of the UDC amendments that would authorize the types of tools that we would like to put in place depending on what the input is. Um, but two, a resolution from city council to move forward with the rezoning of properties where those prioritized sites are. Um, so we've got to talk about the Hay Street Bridge. Um, so I mentioned that we are proposing a prioritized list to city council. Um, and so we've been calling it the short list, and Hay Street Bridge was not only included in the City Council resolution specifically, but it's obviously a priority side just based on the input we've received so far. Um, so we want to be very transparent that the bridge is on the short list and will receive at least one or more few sheds as part of this process. Um, but just know that part of the input is not just that it needs a few shed, but what are those few sheds, what are the specific foot footprints and tools for doing that. Um, in particular, you know, we hear about a need for preservation of views from the bridge to downtown. Well, what does that look like? Is that an individual corridor? Is that multiple corridors? Is that just uniform height restrictions? And so we are looking for your ideas and input regarding that as well. Um, I think that's everything. Um, so I'll call Linda back up, and she's got um, some questions, and we'll have a discussion. Um, <laughs> Okay, are there any clarifying questions? And what I mean by clarifying questions is there's something you don't understand. Now, I'm not asking for opinions just yet. I'll get to that in a minute. <coughs> yes, how many little uh, Valentine's can you get? You'll get five of them. Five? Yes. Uh -huh. Five? Yes. Five? Five? Yes, ma'am. Uh, are all the photos <laughs> from current existing view sheds? I know that last one in the history bridge looked like it was higher up than any. Building I know in the area. I'm assuming they're current view sheds. Do you think from a drone? I think one of them was a drone. Okay. Yeah. I want to make sure because a couple of them was in the smaller one. So. Okay. Any other clarifying questions? Okay. Well, well just 
um, these images, you said people will continue to come and view them, but are these the only images they're going to see? If these are the only ones. Submitting, right, these are the ones that have been submitted, and then staff included a few as well that just based on feedback and the existing list in the development code, we thought it should be included as well. Um, so the, we assume that there'll be more feedback uh, received, right. and so what's that what's next is kind of that online survey, and so it'll include all these images. It'll be kind of a visual survey um, with multiple choice options, and so we'll include additional images if we receive them <coughs> this, after this event. Okay, because you also said there were some other ones. Yes, we'll include anything we've received up to this point. Hang on a second, Jim. Let me get to you. Let me get somebody else. Yes, yes sir. You know, I understand that each individual view shed has its own individual unique set of rules. Potentially. Um, so we could either do it the same way as the Alamo's done, um, but if we find through this, through this process that that's not going to help us achieve the goal we want to achieve, then the code will need to be amended so that we can. I'm sorry, I can't hear you very well. Can you repeat that? Yeah. Maybe. You have two microphones. Yeah. Does this work? Thanks. Yes? Yeah. Um, so, so to repeat what I already said. So, we might find that the existing provisions of the code work for some sites, and so it might follow the same same type of view shed that is in place for the Alamo, or we might find that a more effective tool would be warranted. And so part of the things um, that'll be included in the UDC amendments will be new tools potentially for how we are achieving the desired view protection. So did you just say that some view sheds would have uniform rules already established at other locations, Each and some could be each one will have its own set of rules. Yeah, that'll be so. Each one will have its own ordinance when it's when it goes through the zoning process. And that ordinance will include uh, the description and and formulas and all that sort of meat of, of the actual view shed. Yeah, Jim. The online survey? Yes. It, it's not designed yet, so we can, it'll be, you'll be able to comment on every single one. Thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Any other clarifying questions? Yes. Oh, yes, sir. There was a slide there that talked about uh, it wouldn't, it looked like it said it wouldn't affect any buildings that were built on the site. A situation like, um, when you pointed out the Hay Street Bridge uh, being an important one, would there be any sort of pause in any possible development until we figure out what the view shed uh, result comes out in before any kind of progress is made on the site? So for everybody's background, there is a proposed development that will impact potentially views from, from a corner near the Hay Street Bridge. Um, and so, there's currently no application. There's a new application with a new design that's coming to the city for review. Um, so we will move forward with this process. They will move forward with their process. Um, but ultimately, if, if approvals are in place and there's vested rights in terms of permits submitted to the city, then we can't retroactively make them comply with a new ordinance for the shed. But there's also a lawsuit, and that's the question also, that people you know, the city doesn't seem to stop when there are other things that could, you know. That, like, who respects whom in this situation, you know? There's a lawsuit. So that, that's a big topic, and we can spend some time on it. We anticipated that we would, um, but we want to try to move forward with the agenda and come back to that. We can do that. Why don't we do that and come back to the Don't forget. <laughs> <laughs> Somehow I think that will be forgotten. Yes, sir. I guess I have a follow-up comment. This one is on my group. I'm the family owner of Rod's Lumber. That's that beautiful building that was in the picture adjacent to the bridge. And I'm wondering if uh, private people who have more chips in the pot, so to speak, uh, could be contacted be a little more involved in the two shed rules for the Hay Street Bridge is what I'm talking about. So the business is 95 years old and it has a fourth generation operating it. And I guess we could be 
50, 60 years more there, but I would think we can get it about the bridge. We are hopeful that someday my property is worth way more for me to sell it and move and improve it than to stay there on a metal building and operate a wholesale plywood distribution company, which we're fully capable of doing. So under those views, we're, we get it. We want to be cooperative. In fact, I already have some ideas that satisfy the list that came out uh, adding this as a request to add the bridge. I, I just want to get lost in the shuffle and think that our cooperation is of some value. There are a couple of responses I'd like to make because they would kind of clarify the process a little bit. Um, so existing buildings would not be impacted by new viewsheds. Um, so what's going to be triggered is a, a request for a new permit. Um, so it's buildings and structures, antennas, billboards, towers. Um, so only new construction that's coming in for a permit from the city is going to be subject to any new viewshed limits. But what he's saying is that he has some ideas about how these the view shed might be. What I'm saying is I don't understand if a, once a view shed is put in place, I've been told rumors that heaven forbid if we were to to want to change our building to be allowed or I, if, I think we need to if yeah. we had a fire or something. We need to have a conversation with you individually so that you can give them the input that you want and then we can go from there. Oh, we will. In the development of each of the particular solutions. That, that's what his question was. Okay. Did you have another question? Uh, I had a follow-up question on that, which was basically in the case of a view shed where you're diminishing the potential entitlements of a property, what recompense would be given to that owner? Which it sounded like was it's eminent domain. Yeah, the root of his question. So in a downtown zoning like this, there's a height limit much larger than his one-story building. Mm -hmm. A potential view shed would limit that. And so is that just something that people need to accept even if they're involved in the process or is there uh, a give and take there is the question. There's definitely give and take. Um, so as I mentioned earlier, there's no such thing as a don't build zone. Um, so there needs to be, you know, we need to work to kind of identify you know, where's that balancing line between allowing uh, reasonable use of the property with the community goals. Um, there was a second point in there. Well, I was going to say, so downtown, um, yes, it's unlimited height currently, and so this definitely would be the biggest change. Um, in a lot of these places, there's already design review requirements. There is downtown, there is for the store districts and, and a lot of these sensitive areas. Um, and so there's already going to be a requirement for design review. It's just kind of adding a new layer of guidance for that process. Um, and it is for the zoning regulation, and so there is a process for if for whatever reason the, the view shed didn't make sense when it was applied and everyone thinks that it could actually be taller than it was allowed by the view shed, there is a process for getting a variance from board adjustment if there's support from the historic and design review commission. Okay. Everybody good? There's a, yes. uh, one of the uh, inspirations for this whole process was Woodlawn Lake reportedly, but I don't see any images of Woodlawn Lake here. Did I just uh, overlook them, or no, are they not there? There, there are a couple of images of Woodlawn Lake. Like, these are all ones you showed me, right? There, there are a couple of them. There's one of the, of the, of the spillway, and there's another one of, yeah. of, the, of the lake from the west. Looking at, no, that's what we're I'm sorry, I'm thinking of Elmer North Lake. But there is one of a Woodlawn Lake. I didn't either. I, oh. I'm pretty sure there is because well, we, 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 remember we were we were looking at them and um, it's one that you wouldn't, it's not a, the usual. Yeah, well, the, the view is the, the, the real concern. Of course, you yeah. yeah. shed on the lake, but the, the, the view that seems to be especially for us, uh, the iconic view uh, from, from the lighthouse toward the Central Business District skyline with the Basilica of the Little Flower in the middle ground, but the lighthouse in the foreground, middle ground of the Basilica, and the skyline in the background. That is a view that is iconic of, from the lake 
and, and is one that's worth protecting. And it'd be nice to see it here. That one was obviously included in the CCR as well. So we are certainly looking at that one. And we had images, and I put the whole folder before we did this. And I don't I agree. We had one. I don't know where it is. Yeah, yeah which, it'd be nice to see it. Okay. Um, but it's not just on the list. Yeah. 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 Yeah.
Um, anxious and urgent. Okay. Words, images, or phrases from the presentation? Um, being able to tailor each view to the specific side. Same thing. Words, images, or phrases from the from the presentation. Yeah, so I have one page that stands out. I said it since I were alive. I could see it on our front door. I thought I almost lost it, but I didn't. So oh, okay. this is suddenly become a thing. <laughs> it's important. Huh? Yeah, okay. I did not lose it, but I don't want anybody else to because other neighbors did. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Sir. Multiple views. One just one. Need somewhat these other people. Okay. Uh, zone of respect. Um, I was impressed that the first view was actually of the hills and not of downtown. Um, and I think that's good to remember because that's a view that's disappearing. Yes. It's good to remember that these aren't all of them and that uh, people should be submitting more photos, even those that they think are already protected. Okay. Send them in. Mm -hmm. I would say preservation of a view. We talk so much about preservation of objects and assets, but really preservation of a view of our history. Respect. 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 Complexity. Uh, <clears throat> cultural identifiers and um, the slide where you all showed Austin with the view corridors, that, I found that to be very helpful. Balance. <laughs> Private public cooperation. Uh, the suggestion uh, that the Existing view shed protections in the Unified Development Code are not adequate, and that the uh, front door protection is not the only one that matters, or the, the front door perspective is not the only one that matters. Did you want to say? Did you want to say? Yeah, I think ironic to be having this conversation if we're not really going to be able to protect any views like that are being talked about. I'm sorry, there what? Ironic that we're having this conversation if we're not really going to be able to protect any of the views that we're currently talking about. <coughs> Oh, no, sorry. C civic yeah. process. Okay. City process. Yeah. I, I did show that. Also, views from beautiful sites that have beautiful views in San Antonio. And also, <coughs> postcards of San Antonio. Okay. Uh, the diversity of, of uh, places as well as spaces um, and being able to capture those with view sheds to and from are really essential for maintaining not only city identity but individual community and neighborhood identity. Uh, elements of what comprise a site easement for view shed. Okay. That needs to be a shared vision. Um, Process. Okay. Back there, back there, the Say inform the public input that you had up there on the on the slide. And also along with what Charlotte said is to respect the public input. Because um, there's a lot of feeling that there is not um, it's not being respected. The public is saying what they want and yet the city is still doing what they want with the developers. That's not why are we here? That must be going on. Okay, thank you. Is it? Uh, the view for corridors. Okay. Uh, zone of respect. Mm -hmm. Cultural significance and meaning. Okay. How about what uh, what appeals to you? This is just a this is a <coughs> open for anybody who wants to make a make their comment. But what appeals to you about what he said? That the city is even considering it. Okay. What else? What other? What appeals to you about what was said in this presentation or what we're doing here? It's a dynamic process. The dynamic process. Okay. It sounds like he made it sound like there was some hope that we could protect some things, but it's so nebulous as to what we're even looking at together. Okay. So there's hope, but you're 
a little con you're 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 you like the fact that there's some hope, but you have some concerns about it as well. Okay. Yes, I, yes, sir. I mean, my favorite thing, other than listening to Corey talk, is he's so eloquent. Is uh, that the Ronnie Slumber guy came, and I, unless I had systematically started out stalking you, I probably wouldn't have ever met you. And I thank you for coming. Well, really, I do. No, I thank you. I thank you for coming because I, I do believe you get it. I get it. Yeah. I mean, so, I got it. I, I mean, you have every right to weigh in like any one of the rest of us. I thank you. I mean that. Okay. What else appeals to you? Anything else appeals to you about this presentation and the information that you got tonight? I was glad there's an example in Austin of massing buildings to respect the view of the Capitol or the Tower Life. <laughs> so it was good to have an example that you could see from Austin. Yes, I think the overlay types and how different areas can have different types of uh, view shows. Okay. Overlays. I think the word hope and that it's not too late. We have a great. A lot of great things in the city to see and look at, spaces and places, architecture. That we need to really make this work. So it's not we, really, we really need to make this work because we have a beautiful city and we have a great history of culture and landscapes that need to be identified to protect for that visual appreciation. What other things that appeal to you about what we're doing or what the information that you've heard tonight? This is a pretty good group. This is a pretty good, pretty good yeah. presentation. It's a very diverse group. Yeah. Yeah. I have a comment that you know we we've, we've gotten UNESCO uh, recognition for the missions and, and I think a lot of lives are on San Antonio now. And, and the things that we're talking about are natural resources. They are our resources. These are what people are coming to see. And they're also going to be looking at us and how we're treating our city and our natural resources and what we're doing about it. And so it's it's our time. This is, this is our time to take care of the natural resources. It's time. Yeah. The cultural resources. So what concerns you about this information? And what you said. <coughs> Some of you alluded to them earlier. What are some of the concerns? Again, the concern is that we're having a problem. Hey, hang on one second. Yeah, these are concerns. I just want to make sure she gets a chance. Go ahead, pick up a little bit. That we're, that we're having this process and that several of the pictures presented deal with H Street Bridge. You guys have already talked about this. This is one of the items that was initiating this whole process and the fact that um, we're going to be spending time and energy talking about this, but there's no real protection that's in place during this process of decision making. So or the history history. we might come to the conclusion yes. that hey, this or is history. something we want to preserve, but it'll be too late. So what's the point of having this process if there's not that protection okay. while we're uh, conducting this? Okay. Why is that? I mean, like what Brian said, why is that that we are here? We're right now in a legal action with the developer of the street bridge, yet he's still getting ready to break ground. So are we going to be able to stop that? That's what we're here. We're trying to protect that view shed, right? Well, what we, what we said earlier is that we've been waiting for the end of the meeting to talk about that. But I'd like to get through this and give everybody a chance to do the activities, and then we'll come back to the table. You know how in Austin, all those corridors were looking towards the thing. There were probably a lot of spaces where you stand in Austin and can't see. We might have to compromise with the Hay Street. Well, I'm, I'm not, I'm, I'm, let me use that as an example. And only be able to see the tower and the life building or maybe even the Alamo. You know, there may be only some things that we'll be able to see. We might have to compromise on some of that. Okay. Mm -hmm. But that's my concern. I'm not sure the man that spoke and kind of said, you know, this is, you know, now a world recognized city, you know, UNESCO, you know, stamped approval. Right. Yeah. <laughs> and, 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 but it is all these images and, and many more, but, you know, what, 
many of us find ourselves as we come to so many meetings and we give a lot of time and effort and energy and ultimately <coughs> the concern is that <coughs> development you know has more power than community concerns and community voices and and so you know feeling disrespected okay so that's the concern to have, that you have to have guidelines in place to really implement these ideas and to really make restrictions to really protect those visual corridors and those view sheds. And we need strong guidelines. If they're not going to be in place, people are going to say, well, they're just guidelines, but they have to be required guidelines. Yeah. Well, and, and that relates to something I'm, I'm thinking, and that's that uh, what you listed as tools are really strategies for implementing the ordinance. I'd like to see tools included as mechanisms that the architect uh, and designers can use, and developers can use to uh, respect, respect the sheds. Obviously, we don't intrude on any creativity, but the idea of listing design setbacks or contouring or uh, encouraging shapes other than cubes <laughs> for, for buildings would, would be ways of, of actually talking about the tools that will influence the designs that will influence and protect the, the view sheds. That's, that's what I should should think that we should include in our discussion of tools is that sort of micro approach to, to the tools that lead to the development. Okay, Jared? Um, Mission San Jose has been very concerned with the view sheds that were put in place for the missions. Um, and one of our concerns is uh, allowance of apartment buildings like what's happening at what's in Sion to be built so close, so near to the missions. Um, there was a variance allowed for their view shed. Granted, it was only a foot or two, or, uh, but it was still a variance. My concern is even with the policies that are in, uh, in place for view sheds, is that there's things that they can do, a developer can do to get a variance so that they can be allowed to build just a little taller, just a little higher. Mm -hmm. And for me, it's, it's it, I would think that around the missions, it should be allowed. You know, we have policies in place at the Office of Historic Preservation. We have policies in place uh, by the city and other areas that are not historic, and yet variances can be given. And I'm, I'm concerned with that type of flexibility, especially around our historical sites and especially around the missions. It's very disheartening, it's very disheartening to hear the indigenous people who fought against those apartments at the mission just be totally not even listened to. They were, they were mad. And so, so I just, I, to me it's, and, and they have all the historical reasoning for not wanting that place there. Um, and yet, I understand that <coughs> development has to happen. And this is what comes to our neighborhoods. A developer comes in and says, but this development is going to happen. Just let it happen. It's the natural course of things. And our neighborhoods are all saying, but it doesn't have to be like that. You know, with so much land around, why do you have to mass everything, all this massing on top of historical sites? And that's my concern, that those variances of <coughs> when you have a policy in place. Thank you. Somebody yes, um, just to kind of address what she said, if we don't continue to work to take steps like we're doing and make sure exactly like she said that we're coming for variances because when you go and you read through the rules there are ways that developers can get through the rules they will say their buildings meet to this certain criteria they can build a little higher a little bigger um without we need to learn from our mistakes right so what was the big mistake that we made that now we're trying to correct that's a mission it's the animal so everybody talks about how horrible all those businesses are they're terrible, they're so disrespectful, but we allow it. So if we don't have these discussions, and we don't realize that these things are extremely important, 
and developers have to understand that they're part of it. We're going to have to go back again 50 years, 100 years from now and say, oh my god, look what we let happen. This is horrible. This is terrible. We've got to go spend another billions and billions of dollars to try to fix the mistakes we made. So that's, for me, that's why these discussions are extremely important. And it's important for us to look at the mistakes that we've made and say, this was not good. This is not right what we did. It was a society. So we don't have to go and fix our mistakes again. So you're probably more familiar with our historic design guidelines um, that are guidelines, they're not hard standards. We, we can't hear. And so the HCRC is able to review, you know, conformance with those guidelines and then make a determination to approve or deny an application. What this does that's different than that is it actually sets a hard uh, numerical value to building height. And so that's a zoning standard. Um, and so um, the HCRC cannot alone uh, allow a, a project to exceed that zoning standard, and that's why the Board of Adjustment has been in here tonight. Um, I want to make sure we have time for the two. Sorry. Oh, okay. okay. I'm going to run through the questions a little bit quickly before we go I want to make sure everybody has time to do the activity. Did, did you have like a burning? Is, is it something you did every day? We have not had. I'll keep my feet. Okay. Yeah, just hang on to it. It may come up in, in a minute okay, as well. And kind of to follow what you all were saying, what some of you were saying, how can the desire for protective views be balanced with the desire for urban development? How do we find that balance? Mm -hmm. I think I was going to bring this up during concern, but if you're going to suppress development in certain, certain areas, which is it seems like one of the results of these view sheds, I think that's fine, but there needs to be a suggestion of where that can go instead because we're already consistently ranked among the most inequitable, economically inequitable cities in the country. And so this has the potential to exacerbate that by uh, limiting growth in areas where it's naturally occurring, which would lead to more affordability. So I think there needs to be a suggestion of an alternate place where restricted development or density could go. Because okay. Okay. it's not saying you can't develop there, it's just saying you can only develop It's going to be less than what would already be allowed, yeah. So whatever that delta is, we should find a place for that. So there offer alternatives for yeah. where that development could occur. Okay. And also so that the process isn't about saying don't do stuff here, but it also has a... Um, a positive aspect of saying yes, we want it, but in this place. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Any other thoughts, yes, sir? Well, this is sort of a desire, but I think the children of our community need to be educated about these view sheds and the iconic features that people have talked about and the protection of those things. So as they grow up and look 50 years down the road, we have children who are educated about what to expect. And I think if we put these things in place. We need to translate that to the schools. Architecture schools, of course, already have that. So I, that's a desire of mine to start bringing this to the education of the younger children. Okay. And they're aware of it as our community. Okay. Thank you. Any other thoughts about that? So what benefits are, what, I'm sorry, no, there's just a lot, so but yeah. I want to make sure we get to the other yeah. stuff. So uh, what benefits or impacts could these new shed districts bring to the visual aesthetic? I think the placemaking. Placemaking? Okay. Yeah. How do you find your way around if you can't look at the tower and know where you're going for Place making and wayfinding? Yes, I think there's a light pollution issue. Uh, we were talking about, I think it's EBBA, BBBA, I'm not sure what it is, mm -hmm. it's a pecan and Soledad somewhere. Yeah. And it's bright neon blue and it just dominates the sky. Mm -hmm. And I think we ought to look at uh, that a little further. Some light pollution. Okay. Yeah. That's a concern. Yeah, I, to that point, I think night lighting, <clears throat> how the tower light buildings lit up, or hemisphere or something becomes very <coughs> iconic and wayfinding and significant to the character of our city. So the night lighting is understanding and protecting that as well. Okay. Less or more, whatever it is, but just identifying how it should work. Because that is a really Yes, Another term I heard in geography is mental maps. So it, it, it reinforces mental maps. Yeah. Mental oh, mental maps. 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 Memory of yes. place. Yes. Okay. Okay. Yes. Okay. So there's a lull here. Um, 
I don't know if anybody's ever been to Tulsa, Oklahoma. I like the comment about, well, we should look at where we did wrong mm -hmm. and see, you know, what we can do right now from now on, instead of continuing to do the wrong things. <laughs> and um, Tulsa is a great example because it has an incredible collection of Art <coughs> Deco skyscrapers, but you can't see it because it's completely surrounded by international style boxes. So you almost have to get through, you know, the barrier of the international style and stand just below the beautiful things and, and that's when you really see it. <laughs> so they've, they've kind of killed the goose that laid the golden egg there. Okay, yeah. Okay, let me move us all into the activity then. Uh, in the back, right there with where the speakers, raise your hand if you're going to be helping with the handing out. Okay. Okay. There's some people that don't have them. Oh. Okay, so you should have five, five little post-it notes. And there's, there are pins in the back there. Hang on a second. Just a minute. There, there are pins in the back so you can write on those. Take a look around and and place. Don't put more than one on a on a on a on an image. Okay. Where are we supposed to write? You can write whatever you want on it. This is my favorite. I hate this. You know this one is important. Make sure you do this on different viewpoints. Wait, 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 wait. One minute, please. Can I have your attention for one more minute? One more minute. All right, we're gonna. I'm gonna ask you to do that. We'll give you about 20 minutes or so to do that, and then we'll come back together and just kind of take a visual of what which ones have the what I think would be the most favorite. I just want to clarify something real quick. We're asking you to uh, put a sticker on your favorite, so you're kind of voting in a sense, so that we can look around and see like where where the most stickers are. But you're wait, also wait a minute. Hey, <laughs> sorry. He's saying something important. Okay. Um, so you're using the post-its to A, kind of denote which ones are your favorite or priority to use in your mind, and then also leave a comment about you know, why it's significant to you. It could be your personal story, it could be a love note, it's close to Valentine's Day, or it could be something specific, like we're concerned about this view because of X, Y, Z. Um, so we're going to use this to A, be able to look around and visually see where the most input is received, and we'll focus on those ones, but the B, actually collect your written comments regarding those individual views. About 20 minutes? Yes. Once again, you said you can only vote one side. We can only put one post-it note on each on, on, on an image. In other words, don't put all five.
to the questions that I was asking. And then um, there will also be, and there will be additional public input. They'll, be, they'll have to take this to the city council committee once they're at, at a place where they can do that. They'll take this information and give it to them. And then um, the presentation that Corey made tonight will be on the website, and the meeting report will also be on the website once it's completed and it's been approved. And then uh, the photos will be, be available for two weeks. Is it two weeks? Yeah, they'll be here for two weeks so that if you want to, if you know anybody who wants to come and, and put some uh, some more on here, just go ahead and, and invite people, other people. Please don't come back yourself and do it though. Pardon? <laughs> I don't know if the staff is here, so don't be somebody watching that. All right. They won't know if you've been here or not. This is going to be a this is going to have to be an honor an honor system. Yes, ma'am. I have one quick question though. Are any of the comments that are on the hearts? going to be taken into consideration or yes, all the comments on the hearts will be recorded. Okay, I can find more. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Wait, wait a minute, wait a minute. You have a comment card. Everybody should have gotten a comment card on your seat. But it's very small. I know it's very small. The back is blank. Well, the back is blank so that if you need more room to ride, you can ride on the back. Okay. So if you please just, if, if you'll just respond to what the questions are and then uh, there's a place for you to ride up here and then there's also a place for you to ride on the there's room for you to ride on the back. If you're riding on the back, please indicate that. Just put an arrow or say see the back or something so we can make sure to, to look on the back. So what they'll do is they'll they'll be looking at we'll we'll scan these all, send them in, and then we'll we compile them all into a, a transcription of what's on here. So please be sure to do that, and if you'll also do indicate what your zip code is, that's helpful to us, and then we can get a sort of a, dis, a zip code distribution to see kind of where people are coming from um, from all around town. Um, there will be some, uh, a subsequent meeting as the process is going along. We don't have a date for it yet, but if you signed in uh, with your email, we will we will um, send you a, uh, a notice. If you've got the email for this. You're probably on the list already, but if you know somebody who wants to get on the list, but you know, just send the name in and the email address. We'll also be doing flyers. There's some announcements. There are different ways that we're publicizing. We'll be publicizing the meeting in addition to just email and, and social media. Um, am I forgetting anything? Um, I do want to show how to go to the. the oh yeah, you said you wanted to do that. And you said you talked about that. So it's sanantonio.gov slash historic, or you can do sapreservation.com and go forward. Okay, sanantonio.gov slash historic, um, and that's also on your agenda, the link is, um, or you can type in sapreservation.com. Uh, the first little thing that pops up here is a link to the project webpage. Um, so we've got it all organized here. Um, there's a link to the current provisions in the development code. Um, here is the link uh, to uh, submit public comments. It'll uh, pull an email form. Um, there's links to the public meetings that'll be here. Um, here's an overview of the technical advisory committee. Um, and then this is where you'll go for all of the presentations, um, the documents related to the initiative. Um, and as we have draft UDC amendments, those draft amendments will be placed here as well in the public comment. Um, the next public meeting, although it has, we haven't decided when it needs to be, um, it'll be more in depth than this. Um, at minimum, we'll have actual draft amendments at that point, um, if not looking at the actual design and placement of the zoning overlays. Um, so uh, if you left your, if you signed in and left your email address, we'll make sure that you get an actual email notification of that next day and time, um, but that'll be posted on the website as well. Any questions about where to go for information? Okay. Okay, I'm reminded that we said we were talking about the AQs information about the Hay Street Bridge. You there were some specific questions that you had? Well, people raised some questions and you told them to wait. Yeah. Ask, ask your question again, please. Yes, sir. Yeah. Is there any, you got, uh, this is OHP and also with uh, HDRC, would you guys consider not approving any um, movement or until the discussion on what is appropriate for view sheds for the Hay Street Bridge? are considered. I mean, the city can't really block an application, so we have to review it on the guidelines and standards that are in place. Um, and so, you know, I think there's going to be concern about height and the proximity of the building in relation to the bridge, but there's no standard on 
no, you can't put a building footprint here, or no, it can't be this tall. And so it, it would be very easily challenged in court should, should a decision be appealed. I, I want to make a point that during the B&B ordinance in the 90s, there was a moratorium placed on bed and breakfast in Key Lion. There, there, it's been there, there, is, there is no moratorium, and that is not something that staff or the HDRC can implement. Okay. Well, I understand that you, can, you can't do that. I do, even though I don't like it. But I would ask that moving forward, we consider in the priority list, not just because it got me a hard time, but in the priority list, a sense of urgency in getting back to committee so that they can take the next steps. They're relying on you the way, and I went to that committee. I thought maybe May, June, we could have a one story up by then. I'm asking for you guys to consider moving the Hay Street Bridge and other anybody else, any one of these that's, that is in danger of being block today or tomorrow and I'm not saying stop his application he'll think about that himself okay but on your part and our part let's work with a sense of urgency as if it matters because he will go away and he, I already think we're sorry as a city somebody said oh crap what the hell did we do and now you guys are stuck with trying to un untangle this, and I get that, okay? But the reality of the situation is you're not untangling it. You're enabling if you hold on to it until May, and then city council says, oh, sorry, we won't do that again. There's only one like it probably in the whole state, and that's... We're, we're, we're planning to go to city council committee in March. When in March? Uh, um, I don't know the date. Third I Tuesday. think it's the third Tuesday when they meet. And, and Shannon, that would be to oh. share the views that people have. Okay. okay. At that. least we have some, uh, even a loose commitment. And I'm taking that from the director. That's a loose commitment to try and get there in March. That is our intent. Uh, um, now, obviously, we don't set those agendas. This is the, the chair of the committee does. And so. I, I, I know her number. Um, so I'm just saying that is that is the intent is that we would go in March and then it would go to we'll full council. We'll help you with a It Thank would go to full council shortly after that. Thank you for that. The presentation at that committee would be those prioritized sites, but also the draft, like proposed. Yeah, I, I, don't, I didn't say it was an easy job. I'm trying to tell you, I'm not mad at you guys, but we're not stopping until the building is up. I mean, it's just that simple. You just happen to be one of the stepping stones. Sorry. Like you guys anyway. <laughs> <laughs> What's the name of the Any, Anything else? Arts, culture, and heritage. Yeah, it's the Arts, Culture, and Heritage Council Committee. That it goes before in March? Yes. And then they're the ones that do what? Make a recommendation to the full city council. Yeah, you know, um, follow the CCR. They're, they're so, sticky about So that. full council would be um, maybe late March, or the first week of April. I mean, it'll be short, a, shortly after the council meeting. But in, in that first meeting, you'll have design ideas for each site on no. what the view shed will no. be? No. It will just be the amendments to the UDC and the view sheds that, are, that we recommend to council to tell us to create. The <laughs> ultimately, we, it's a rezoning, as Corey said in the presentation. And so we, we have to have direction from city council to initiate the actual zoning cases. So there won't be any details about the the specific rules for each overlay at that point. That will be developed after council tells us to. Mm -hmm. that's, that's step two. So part of the reason that it has to wait until step one is done is we need council resolution in order to initiate those zoning applications. It's basically, you know, once the, the proposed design of the, the, the overlays are in place and there's boundaries set, we're gonna start notifying property owners as part of the rezoning process. And so you can imagine getting a letter saying the city is rezoning your property so you can't build as tall as you can now. So we want to make sure that we have direction from council to do that. And what about it, like for Hastry Ridge, the clash between historic neighborhood, which it's right on the boundary in the downtown, is there a way to challenge that? Because I think when we've been trying to talk about 
the guidelines, we're kind of saying, well, these guidelines don't really fit downtown as much as they fit, you know, we, we should be looking at it more in terms of historic, and that's just the major clash. Yeah, I mean, unfortunately, the property is, I mean, the, I get what you're saying, but the only zoning, the only regulations that apply because of the zoning classification of the property is the downtown design guide, and so that is, that is what applies to that property. Right, but I guess your questions were, you know, what are new ways of looking at things and, you know, respect and all those other options. So how does that, that's, I guess, the question of how do we, we have these parameters, but we're asking us what we want. And so that's the challenge and change of being able to. Yeah, and I, and I think that would be part of the conversation that happens up for each individual you should to make sure that it's designed in such a way that it accomplishes what the community's trying to accomplish. You had a comment and then and then Jane. Go ahead. Yeah, is there anything that we can do to help uh, accelerate this process of urgency, to help with the standards that you guys are trying to set, to help you guys pick what kind of view shed needs to be protected over these areas? Yeah, I mean the rules are already in motion. Um, so the only thing that would slow it down is for is if the council members said, have we heard from the public? And then they're concerned that we haven't taken that step. You've seen it a lot in other initiatives. And so we do want to make sure that we get everything up front, that we show them we've done all the homework and we've collected all the input and that we've provided the best recommendation for moving forward. Okay. June and then and then Liz and then Sean. My question is uh, really a legal one. Yeah, regarding the Hay Street Bridge, are you saying that uh, uh, the property owner can submit an application for a building and uh, as long as he follows the current rules, he could do that? And uh, the uh, overlay that we're discussing does not apply until the city council adopts it. Correct. Thank you. The zoning overlay would have to be in place in order for the city to enforce whatever the standard was. Liz? Uh, I'm going to make this quick, but I don't want anything derailing. Um, I want to make sure that within this process, the public also includes business owners and developers. I want to know that, what is your name? Tom had every opportunity to bring some of his peers. What yes? Is, is that happening? Yeah, and one of the steps that we're going to take is um, yeah. Development Services holds a pretty regular meeting of the Development Process Task Force, and they review proposed amendments and changes the process and code. Um, and so they're going to have probably the opposite opinion of most people in this room. Sure. So that's part of the process. Who's well. on it? Yeah, they don't like us. Well, no, the, the actual uh, committee members that make up the yeah, development yeah. task force. Well, right. uh, sure. If somebody was asking about how we can get involved, how, how we can help get this process moving, and what you said about when council hears, when they've got five calls to their council, each, each council person has five calls to their council, into their office that says, these people were really excited about this meeting about view sheds. So if each of us calls our council, if just the people in this room tonight call our council people, I'm sure that there's got to be 50 of us, right? So that's five. You got an email there too. They yeah. Calls. Yeah. Oh, okay. yeah. If we first call some council people, you don't even know. I don't. Know. <laughs> but but they they look at those call lists and they say what they then when somebody comes forward to them and says. Well, the public wasn't doesn't know, and and their count their their secretary whispers in their ear. Five people called us and said they loved it. You know, so that's the way we can really help, and it really works. Council staff is nodding. And there could be opportunities okay. for Kathleen and private citizens to speak at these view shed committee hearings on Fridays. Would that be a good um, yes. venue for? citizens to speak on Yes, um, so the the meeting with the Butchet Technical Advisor Committee, that's the committee I mentioned earlier that's kind of helping craft the nominate or you know, nominations, craft the uh, amendments. 
Um, we are meeting with them next on February 9th, and those are technically public meetings, and so anybody can sit in and observe. Um, but we do allow time at the end for citizens who watched the meeting or sat in to ask questions or express comments at that time as well. And there was a question back in the back. Similar questions uh, regarding the UDC. I know you're looking at amending uh, the UDC as it is today. Has there been any discussion about interim controls moving forward for view sheds like there are for historic districts? I know the city has done a lot for adding additional regional coordination, restructuring the building standards boards over the years. I just would, there's just a lot of conversation here about yeah. endangered view sheds. It, it's possible if the code was amended, amended to allow that. So the code, when it talks about decisions about historic preservation, allows for those interim controls. If, you know, if a historic district is coming through the process and hasn't made it to city council yet, but in the, the meantime has already has that approval from HCRC, then there are interim controls in place, but those are available because the code is written that way. So it's something we could talk about moving forward. Um, if, if there was a clear um, proposed uh, zoning overlay with set standards um, and that's received some sort of uh, approval from city board or commission, then we could potentially do interim controls. But to be clear, that would, go, that would be possible all these are an amendment. Down the road, it wouldn't. It wouldn't be. It wouldn't be upon the amendment of the UDC. It would be once the view shed were actually designed and the overlay was going through the process. Then potentially there could be interim until council takes action. I mean, we'll we'll double check with legal and all that. But I believe we could write interim controls into the draft amendments that were made in Part One and in Part yeah. Two as something is approved to have interim controls. Yeah. I just think we should learn from history so it won't break the interim. Yeah. Well, and you know, it also sends a message of get your permits now because the city's going to start regulating. Chris, did you have one? You had said February 9th. What time? Just to people out. Gosh, 11:30 um, in the morning, and that's going to be at 1901 South Alamo on the second floor. We've been creating an event now on Facebook, or should we create that? It's not one that we promote because there's not space for everyone to come, um, but we'll put the calendar on the website if people are interested specifically um, in attending, they'll have that information. Any other questions or comments? Please be sure and fill out your comment card. There's a box right as you walk out the door where you can put them, or you can give them to me, or you can give them to Laura, or you can give them to Corey. Uh, if you thank y'all very much for coming this evening. We really appreciate your interest and, and participation. Thank you. And we're going to hang around for a few more minutes. If you're lingering questions.